Hi guys, here's a video going over section 3.5, exponential and logarithmic models. So after you are done watching this video, you should be able to solve applications using exponential models, more so exponentials than logarithmic, because I took out the logarithmic models um, for this video. So models are basically word problems. So example one says compound interest, assume that each scenario is compounded continuously, find each of the missing values. So continuously compounded interest has a formula. It's A equals PE to the RT, where A is your final amount, P is your starting amount, your principal, R is your annual percent rate, and T is time in years. So if I look at this table, my 2,000 is my initial investment, so that's the P. My 2.75% is the R, but I'm gonna change it to a decimal, so that's 0 0.0275. And what I wanna do is I wanna find the time that it takes for that amount to double, as well as the amount after 10 years. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up my formula with the two pieces of information that I have. So I have P, which is 2,000, and then E to the RT, so 0 0.0275 times T. And I'm gonna use that as the base to solving the other two problems at a time it takes to double and the amount after 10 years. So if I wanna figure out the amount of time it takes for my initial amount to double, I need to first figure out my final amount. Well, if my initial amount is doubling, then that means my final amount is going to be two times my initial amount. So two times 2,000 is 4,000. And that's what I'm gonna plug in for A. So I have 4,000 equals 2,000 e to the point 0 0.0275 times T. From here, I need to isolate my exponential function. So I'm gonna go ahead and divide both sides by 2,000. And that gives me 2 equals e to the point 0, 0.0275t. Now I have an exponential function with e as a base, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. So I have natural log of 2 equals, and I'm going to combine a step right here. So since I'm taking the natural log, what that allows me to do is it allows me to bring down that exponent. So that's why we use the natural log, because we have a logarithmic property that allows us to bring down exponents. So I'm gonna bring down my exponent and then do natural log of e. Now the reason I'm picking natural log because I have a base e is because natural log and e, they cancel each other out. Natural log of e equals one. So that's just going to um, equal one. So that just leaves me with 0 0.0275 times t, and then I'm gonna divide both sides by 0 0.0275, 0 0.0275, 0 0.0275, and then I'm gonna plug it into my handy dandy calculator. So natural log of two divided by 0 0.0275. And the time with the PERT formula is always in years, so that gives me approximately 25.2 years. For the next problem, I want to find the amount after 10 years. So I want to find A when T is 10. So I'm just going to take 10 and plug it in for T. So I have A equals 2000 E to the point 0 0.0275 times 10. Squeeze it in there because I ran out of space. I'm going to plug that into the calculator. So 2000 e to the point 0 0.0275 times 10 it gives me approximately $2,633.06. And since you are talking about money, you want to round to two decimal places because it makes the most sense to do so. All right, let's do another one. So for this one, I have my initial investment, which is 500, so I have P. I do not know R, but I know the time that it takes for my initial amount to double. So I know that T is 13 when A is 1,000. Where, where the heck did that 1,000 come from? Well, it's th it takes 13 years um, to be able to double my initial amount. So my initial amount is 500, so I want to double it, so A is 1,000. 
and I want to find the amount after 10 years, but of course I cannot find that unless I solve for my percent annual rate, which is what I am going to do first. So I'm going to set that up. So I have 1,000 equals 500 e to the r times 13. And I don't actually know r, so I'm going to go ahead and solve for that first. Same thing as the last one, I'm going to isolate my exponential function. So I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 500. That gives me 2 equals e to the 13 r. I'm just rearranging that exponent because I like the way that looks better. And then I'm going to go ahead and take the natural log of both sides. Now when I do take the natural log of both sides, again, I'm combining a step that allows me to bring down my exponent. And of course, natural log of e equals 1. So I just have 13r equals natural log of 2. I'm going to divide both sides by 13. So I get r equals natural log of 2 divided by 13 in my calculator is 0 0.0533. And I'm going to go to four decimal places um, just because I want to find my percent. And that as a percentage is going to be 5.33%. And now that I actually know R, I can go ahead and find the amount after 10 years. So my initial amount was 500. My R is 0 0.0533, and the time for this problem is 10 years. So I'm going to take that and plug it in for T. I'm going to plug that into my calculator, and that gives me approximately $852.02. So those are your two examples dealing with continuously compounded interest. The next thing we're going to look at is something called half-life. So a certain radioactive substance decays according to this formula, which I'm going to go ahead and square, box, square, I'm going to box it, um, where Q0 is the initial amount of the substance and T is the time in days, approximate the half-life of the substance. So first of all, what is half-life? Half-life is the amount of time it takes for a particular substance to reach half of its original value. Now, if you look at the information that I have given you, all I've given you is the formula. I haven't given you an initial amount or a final amount. I haven't given you time or anything like that. So when that's the case, and we're going to make a note where we don't have enough info, so not enough info, make it up. So since I don't actually have an initial value, I'm going to go ahead and make up an initial value. So my initial value is, I'm going to go with 50. And because my initial value is 50, um, I'm going to go ahead and take that and set up my equation. So I have 50 times e to the negative 0.0045t. And I'm going to take half of my initial, and that is what my equation is going to equal. And again, I'm using half of my initial because we're talking about half-life. And of course, just like with the other ones, I want to isolate my exponential function, so I'm going to divide. You'll notice as you do some of these problems, they get quite repetitive, because you are essentially doing the same type of problem just in the different context um, of various word problems. So I divided from here, I'm going to do the natural log. As I do the natural log, I am also going to bring down my exponent at the same time. So natural log of 0.5 equals negative 0.0045t times natural log of e, which we all know by now is going to cancel out because it equals 1. And then I'm going to divide. And I'm going to plug it into my calculator. So natural log of 0.5 divided by negative 0.0045 gives me approximately 154 days. So again, if I don't give you enough information or the problem doesn't give you enough information, go ahead and make up initial values. And since we're talking about half-life, 
My initial value was 50, so I cut that in half, so my equation is going to equal 25. And you can do that with um, compound interest formulas as well. So if I don't give you an initial value, you can just make one up. And then just do whether you're doubling, tripling, or half-life taking halves. Um, and then just go through the problem like you normally would. All right, last one. So population, the population P in thousands, and I'm gonna highlight that word right here because it's super important, of a city is given by this formula. I'm gonna uh, box it, where T equals zero represents 2001. According to this model, when did the population reach 182,500? So the reason why I highlighted that the population is in thousands is because this formula, is condensed so that my numbers are in terms of thousands. So that 32.5 actually represents 32,500. So what I want to do is with this value right here, I need to adjust it so that it is in terms of thousands. So the easiest way to deal with that is to look for the thousand marker, so that comma, and just change that to a decimal. So that becomes 182.5. Uh, I don't know why that line was there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and set that equal to my P. So I have 182.5. Now you'll notice I'm not actually using 182,500 for P. If you accidentally make that mistake where you do not change that comma to a decimal point, what's going to happen is that your number in the end is going to be way too big and it's not going to make any sense. So just double check that. And then from there, just like with all the other problems we've done so far, I'm going to isolate my exponential. Except with this one, I have that 32.5 there, so I'm going to start by getting rid of that first. So I'm going to subtract 32.5 from both sides. That gives me 150 equals 95.3 e to the point zero five five t and then I'm going to divide by 95.3. Uh, I need my calculator. 150 divided by 95.3 is 1.5740. Usually as I'm working through a problem, I will round to four decimal places just to try to keep it as accurate as I can. And then in the end, I'll round to either the nearest whole number or a um, couple decimal places, depending on what the question says. And then, just like the other examples, I'm going to take the natural log of both sides, but as I do that, I can also bring down my exponent. That's why I circle the exponent, by the way, because I'm about to bring it down. And of course, natural log of e is 1. So I'm going to go ahead and divide by 0 0.055. And then I'm going to plug it in. So I have natural log of 1.5740 divided by 0 0.055, and that gives me about 8.2, and my time is in years. Okay, now before I circle that as my answer, I need to go back and read the question. So the question says, when did the population reach 182,500? It doesn't ask how long does it take. Um, so the 8.2 years answers that question. How long does it take for the population to reach that amount? I want to know when. And that's when you go back and look at this information. That was supposed to be a marker, not a highlighter. There we go, going back to look at this. So t equals zero represents 2001. So if t is about eight point years, that means my final answer is going to be eight years um, plus 2001, which is 2009. All right, so that concludes your video over section 3.5.